Hello and welcome to another video. Whenever you rotate a function or a couple of functions or a number of functions or just a section of whatever you, you've plotted about a line, you always have two things that happen. It is either you have rotated that section about a line that is joined or attached. That's the word, attached to the part that you are rotating. Now, if that happens, you will get um, a solid that you can find the volume of by using the disk method because there is no hole and there is no gap. But whenever the region you're rotating is not attached to the line about which you're rotating, there will always be a gap, there's a hole, and that will lead to you getting a solid that requires the washer method or the shell method. So what I'm going to show you today is how to use the shell method. I've had other videos showing you how to use the disk method and the washer method. Okay, just a quick recap. Watch this. If this was the function I want to use and I'm going to get a, um, a disk method of solving this volume problem, this is what's going to happen. Say I plot this graph and it's going to be like this. Okay, it is cut off by the line y equals zero. So these are the two functions and this is what I'm going to get. Okay, let's just assume I made a good sketch. If I rotate this about the, the same axis that is attached to the function, I'm going to have this. What you have is a solid with no holes and no gaps. So what happens is because you rotate it this way, you can just make, make your disk, I mean, your disks like that. So the disk you have is going to be something like this of a thickness, which you call dx. And then the radius of this is just the distance from the center, which is from here to the function itself. So your radius is basically the gap from here to zero. Okay, which is basically the function, and that's your y. Your radius is your y, which is equal to the function. Okay, now, but if we decide to leave a gap like this, so say you have a function like this, and you decide to leave a gap here, what happens is this function comes down here, and when you rotate, you see, what you're going to have is going to look like this is going to make a rotation, and there's going to be a rotation about this side. I hope you see that. So this is going to be a solid that has a hole right there in the middle. So when you cut a vertical stuff like this, a disc, it's not going to be a disc. It's going to be a washer because there's a tiny hole in the middle. And then you have two radii. Okay. Now, how do you solve this? You can either use the washer method. This is actually easy because everything is smooth around it. Unlike what we're about to do, sometimes... You shouldn't try using the washer method because although you have two radii, it's difficult for you to establish them depending on how it is. And you're going to see it in this example. So let's sketch this and then let's set it up. You have um, the function 1 minus x squared. If you sketch that and then it's cut off by the line y equals 0, it's going to be this. Okay. Now we're about to rotate this about x equals 2. You can see that x equals 2 is, ex is external to this function. So you expect to have a gap in the middle somewhere. So we're going to rotate about this line. That this will reflect. Always do that because it helps you draw a better picture. So we have, so I assume that these two are similar enough. Now see what happens. There was a rotation, okay? So if we do a rotation like this, okay? There was a rotation. What happens is this end will go this way. And this end too will go around. And the top part also will go around like that. And come join this part. Okay? And we're going to have a top also that rotates like this. So you have all these rotations. Everything rotates and then you form a solid. What kind of solid do you think is formed? Well, it looks like, um, imagine the top part of a bagel. So just break your bagel in a two. What you have is exactly what you have here. It's just a little bit um, um, puffed up a little bit. So, but that's basically it. Let me make it more beautiful. So this is the shape I'm talking about, and that's what happens. So you have to imagine that this hole in the middle 
is a bunch of cylinders that keep stacking and getting wider and wider and wider and wider and wider. Some will be taller because it's curving and some will be shorter, but whatever it is, it's a cylinder. And then you keep stacking many of them. So here we did, we talked about discs, but here we talk about cylinders. Grab this and just slot it in. What shape is this? It's a cylinder. And this method is very cool. Okay, so you just have to imagine that there is a cylinder right there in the middle and around it is another cylinder that goes around it, okay? And then around them is another cylinder that goes around them, okay? So, and it keeps spreading and spreading and spreading. All you have to ask yourself, what is the formula for the volume of a cylinder? And you'll be done in no time. So, every cylinder is just the circumference going up the same measurement. So, it's circumference times height multiplied by the thickness is what gives you the volume. So, let's get this straight. If the thickness is dx, your bounds will be the original bounds for this, which are negative 1 and plus 1. Remember? Okay? If your bounds, if your thickness is dy, then the original bounds will be 0 to 1. But the way this is, remember we have cylindrical shells, and each shell looks like this. Okay. Now, the shell has no bottom thickness, because remember, this is just flat on the bottom. The building up is happening on the sides, so the thickness has to be on the side like this, which is dx. So we're dealing with dx, and immediately we can decide what our bounds are. The lower boundary is negative 1, the upper boundary is 1. Now let's talk about the circumference. Remember that this is the volume of a cylinder, which is 2 pi rh, actually. It's 2 pi rh, and that would have been it, but there's a thickness attached to it. It's supposed to be 2 pi r squared, but again, we can deal with that later. But this is it for the sake of this integration. It is circumference times height multiplied by the thickness. So what is the circumference of each of the shells? Well, if you notice, each of the shells goes this way. There's a radius here, so we say it is 2 pi r but what is our radius our radius is the distance from here to the function and remember whatever you get here will be the x coordinate whatever at whatever point you draw your line the value here is always the x coordinate okay and so we can say this is the gap from here to here this is point two remember from here if you remember our original picture this was two okay so this is two minus x and then we go to the height what is the height of each of the shells well, each of the shells just has to be as high as y. Oh, that sounds like a rhyme, as high as y. So y is the function, okay? That's our height. But instead of writing y, we might as well just replace it with this since we're integrating with respect to x. So I'm gonna remove that and put the function there, which will be one minus x squared. That's, that's y, and we're done. We just need to integrate this. We have set up the integral. So this will be the same thing as integral from negative 1 to 1 of 2 pi. Uh, can I take out 2 pi? Yes, I'm going to do 2 pi here and say volume equals the integral. Now, if I multiply this by this, this is going to be 2 times 1, that's 2. Oh, can we um, change this to 0 to 1? Well, don't do it if you're not sure that the function is an even function. It would be wrong to change this from 0 um, negative 1, 1 to 0, 1 and then multiplied by 2 or doubled like we usually do when we have an even function. This is not an even function because there's a problem here and there's even another problem here. Okay. So that's what our final answer is going to be, and I hope you like this. This is the only formula you need to know, that the volume is equal to the integral of the circumference multiplied by the height multiplied by the thickness, and you'll always be fine. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.